the meaning of that name. Now, when we go to the Gospel of Luke, and then it was announced to the shepherds, and, uh, and also reflected at the same time the, uh, the meaning of his mission, he said this way, the angel said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. By this time, the, the meaning of his Savior ship was not limited to or among the Jews, nor to the chosen one. The presentation was made clear, and we need to be informed of this one, that Jesus died for mankind, humankind. He died for all the people. He died for all colors, for all race and tongues and cultures. He died for the world. And that's why he said, this good news is not what? It's not your private property. You don't have exclusivity of ownership about the saviorship of Jesus Christ. You know why? The angel was so clear. He said that this good news of good tidings will be to all people. How is that? For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Look at the multitude and the implication of his death, I mean his birth. His birth unfolded the story of salvation. The cross, the culmination of redemption, the ascension is the proclamation of victory over death. So the entire thing from his birth, it wasn't his birth that has given us salvation, but unfolded the story of salvation, culminated on the cross. And then when he ascended, and then he resurrected from the dead, the pronouncement of total victory over death. That's why we celebrate the uh, resurrection of Jesus Christ. So now we have these two things for our understanding tonight. When we put these things together now, Jesus Christ, what he does, Emmanuel, who he is, the meaning of his coming is his death for all the people that the people of the world may have the opportunity to hear the gospel and respond to the offering of Jesus Christ. Now, turn with me please to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and you will see some important uh, thoughts in here. He was described as from the beginning the Word. In other words, beginning from where? Beginning from eternity uh, towards the ending of eternity. Alright? In other words, he has no beginning, but in the history of mankind, he came in the flesh. That's why we said, on this zero zero hour, he came. But, he is from the beginning without end, and then at the end without end. Here he is saying, this word, verse 14, became flesh and dwelt among us. If our goal is to have a greater appreciation of the season, we need to resolve within our hearts and within our mind that this great creator in the person of Jesus Christ revealed of the appeared among us in the flesh. What's the meaning? And what's the point? What's the meaning and what's the point? John presented it this way. He came and this is in him was light and the light was the light of men. And then he came for a week uh, this uh, and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. In chapter 3, it is clearer. He who believes in him is not condemned. But, uh, sorry, verse 17. For God did not send his son. That sending is having an allusion to his birth and to his coming into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The same word, the same purpose, the same objective in different sense. The idea now is to paint before us this God in the flesh have one certain purpose. According to John, that he might save the world. Alright? In this time referring to all peoples on earth. But, look at 
said that. And he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Meaning, not all people here on earth would have elected to believe on the mission and in the meaning of his coming. So if we ask, who will miss Christmas this season? Those who would continue to refuse and believe in Christ. All right, so in this way, it's saying, but no, in verse 19 it says, and this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world, men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were aware evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. In other words, we would rather stay on our wicked way of living rather than exposing ourselves under the light. In other words, we, don't, we are refusing what the Lord God is offering for us through His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the anthology. A collection of passages from Matthew, Luke, and John, just like our choir singing those important messages and put them together that in crafting one harmonious melody, one continuing thought before us tonight, that we may have a stronger, growth and greater understanding of the meaning of the season. And so if we ask you, have you responded by faith in Jesus Christ and place your faith and trust unto Him as your only Savior and only Lord. If you have not done that yet, tonight, God has a reason and has a purpose why you are here. Once again, for you to hear the gospel through songs and this proclamation of the word, and that once again is coming, I mean, he's opening the same message given uh, 2,000 years ago. <laughs> And if you would still receive the message of salvation, verse 19 simply says, Because men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. One more important insight. That light is not referring to this, nor to that one. That's referring to Jesus Christ. Let's make a home run tonight. If in your heart you are yet to receive and invite Jesus Christ as your Savior in prayer tonight, we encourage you to surrender your life to Him. And as you are listening, our purpose is not to entertain you, but to present to you the Savior of the world. These choir members and choir directors have labored so much, have given their time, have uh, put aside other things, came together a lot of times, spent so many hours. You know why? <clears throat> they love the Lord. And in their singing, they wanted to transmit the message of salvation to all of you. Especially to all to those people who are here to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Before I close tonight, I'd like to remind you, every person here without Jesus is lost, lost forever. I did not say that. The Word of God says that. Without Him, we are lost forever. Without Him, we are forever lost. I want every head bowed and every eyes closed. The purpose always of the presentation of cantata like this is really and truly to proclaim the wonderful grace of God as evidenced by the presence of His Son in the flesh. To forgive us of our sins.
to redeem us from the penalty and punishment of sin. And so tonight by faith, hearing the message of the gospel, would you like to make a response to the offer of the Savior? My Savior and to Amang said, and my son. My Savior and to Adad said, and my son. Anyone here tonight who for the first time may be challenged by this kind of message, Sincerely in your heart, you are trying to say, Lord, I have not thought this issue this way. I thought I'm okay. No, you are not okay. Without Jesus, without the Savior, you are lost. There is no other way around it. He is the only way. The only truth, the only life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. And so, as you meditate and reflect on those messages you heard already, and you will hear some more, we are giving you an opportunity to make a decision and say, Lord Jesus, tonight, by faith, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And the better is that you have come that you may save us from our sin and forgive us. And not according to thy word, God sent his son to the word, not to condemn the word, but to save it. I'm coming to you, Lord Jesus. I'm opening my heart. I'm blessing unto you my faith and trust as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for the forgiveness of my sin and thank you for loving me and giving me their life. If that is the desire of your heart, you pray before the Lord. And so we give you this kind of meditation and once again invite a place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. If anyone tonight may have that kind of decision, we have our church leaders, myself, pastors, and others. At the time after our dismissal tonight, if you would like to stay, talk more about that when I'm here, or other pastor around, to show to you the gospel. Wanted it sure that you know where you're placing your faith. We will point you the scripture, the word of God, and they will lead you to a decision of your own. Thank you, Lord, tonight for bringing these people together in this house of worship. And that once again, your word explained, and that you be lifted up in our needs. For after all you have said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. And they are referring to the cross. And tonight, there in the manger, baby, the God in the flesh, while all the attention is focused on that serene sin, help us not to miss the message. The Savior. Messiah has come. Amen.
Is there any wonder that this night is filled with miracles and mysteries and unrelenting splendor? Is there any wonder that the sky's alive with angels shouting Gloria? Today you have a Savior.
Okay, one, two, three. Our two choirs in here and laboring together to honor the Lord, SJBCI, and the Church of the Good Shepherd in Cherry Hill. Thank you. Father, we do acknowledge your holiness. And because you are holy, we do pray that as we go out of this place, we will be able to imitate that holiness by living a life that is glorifying to you. Father, may this season of giving, which you gave your best gift to us, will be embedded in us so that we can also give to those who haven't known the Lord Jesus Christ the gospel and that through your word people will receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Father, we do honor you, we do love you. And for this, we give you all the honor and the glory. For in Jesus' name, we commit all these things. Amen. Stand still, please. Stand still. We are singing the final song, and that is uh, the one that we are always singing, and then the benediction. We want you to extend.